Coming up on the Fox 13 Quick Cast, new rules for people driving into or flying into Utah. What the governor's making travelers do starting Friday. Doctors from two of Utah's largest healthcare systems are taking a big step in fighting COVID-19. And the unforgettable way people said their last goodbyes to a Cache County school bus driver. This is a Fox 13 Quick Cast. Nothing official yet, but it looks like Utah students will not be returning to classrooms anytime soon. Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox says there is only a slight possibility, quote unquote, of having school in May. That's tough. For high school seniors, many will miss the formal traditions that come with this once in a lifetime moment. High school's hard, and so the end goal is just being able to graduate and go to prom and like do all that fun stuff for the last time, and now we don't get to do that. Our hope certainly is that, uh, that we'll be able to return to uh, something approaching normalcy um, as, the, uh, as the, the, the next school year approaches, and uh, we certainly believe that that's going to happen. Abby says the sacrifice will be worth it if it helps defeat the coronavirus sooner. To be clear, no official word yet about the end of this school year and graduation ceremonies. Starting Friday, people driving into or flying into Utah will have to fill out a travel declaration about where they've been. It's part of a new executive order from Governor Herbert to slow the spread of COVID-19. This travel declaration will ask travelers if they've been tested for COVID-19. Uh, and particularly in the last 14 days and what the test results are. The governor also urges Utahns not to travel this Easter and spring break. He says stay home, flatten the curve, and remember social distancing. Researchers with Intermountain Healthcare and University of Utah Health have begun clinical trials for hydro hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin as a way to fight COVID-19. Those drugs are normally prescribed for lupus, arthritis, and malaria. And how quickly we have answers depends a little bit on how quickly the Utah community participates in this study. Researchers plan to enroll nearly 2,300 patients in the trials who have or may have had or may have COVID-19. A storm system is moving up from the south and west, so we are seeing those showers moving in as we speak, and that's going to continue to head towards northern Utah, too. So despite that beautiful day today, uh, we will be looking at changes moving in tomorrow. Here's a look at the satellite radar, and you can see those showers developing across uh, the southwest from St. George on up towards Beaver County, Paiute County, seeing some of those showers as well. Zooming on in, you can see showers up towards Cedar City, Bryce Canyon, even some thunderstorms. Don't be surprised to hear that tonight. Tomorrow morning, we'll start off in the upper 40s and low 50s in northern Utah, so we will have lots of sunshine to start off the day. Showers will stay south, but for the afternoon, low to mid 60s with increasing clouds and showers moving from south to north from Provo on up to Ogden and into southern Idaho. Seven day forecast southern Utah, Easter weekend 69 and sunny for Sunday. Northern Utah temperatures will drop big time Easter weekend, 46 the high Sunday with a chance for rain and snow. Thank you, Kristen. Spring sports teams are feeling the effects of COVID-19 as leagues postpone the season. Brighton Baseball says they've bought ten dollars to $20,000 worth of gear for the hundreds of youngsters. They usually rely on registration fees to recoup the cost, but don't make that money if no one is playing ball. The league found out it may be eligible for relief through the CARES Act. Federal money set aside to help nonprofits just like them. For us to be able to tap into that now, it's really a saving grace. And what it will do is it will be able to, it'll help us be able to help our families that participate in youth sports to be able to, to move forward with the things that they need to do. We can also protect our program for next year so that we can start fresh. If they get a grant or loan, Brighton Baseball will refund parents who paid fees for a season that is now on hold and keep Brighton Baseball from going into debt. Finally, a touching tribute to a Cache County school bus driver who recently passed away. This school bus parade was for Cornish bus driver Ed Robinson. He served in the Army before driving buses for the Cache County School District for 40 years. And we thought it would never be this wonderful, but I think Dad's in heaven just loving it mm. ed is survived by his wife three daughters 11 grandchildren and 25 great-grandchildren ed was 84 years old 
That's the Fox 13 Quick Cast, the day's top stories in just five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Modern Family starts now.